Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome as we continue our attempt in Crusader Kings 3 to get the Blood Eagle achievement, where you take one of the four sons of Ragnar Lothbrok and lead them or one of their descendants to rule all of Britannia. Descendants is indeed the key word, because in our last episode, King Ironside, King Bjorn Ironside of England, died, passing the baton on to his son, King Erker Bjornsson, who despite some lowly stats and potential ineptitude, has risen to the occasion, raising his martial stats and his prowess stats, navigating a delicate relationship with a feisty and powerful vassal, knocking out a rebellion, and expanding the kingdom. So a lot of work left to be done. Let's jump in and get started. If you watched the previous episode, you'll know that King Erica started chipping away at some of these independent counties in Ireland and up here in Scotland. The problem is attacking one county at a time is going to take a long time to get the remaining counties that we need in order to be able to take over Britannia. In order to attack more counties, we have to raise up top here. We have our prestige, which directly connects to our fame level. Right now we are distinguished. In order to start attacking duchies instead of just single counties, we have to become illustrious. And in order to get to illustrious, we need 2,500 more prestige. It means we have to do more prestigious things. I've got some ideas. One, we might go on a hunt. We can continue to pick off some of these counties. But I think another way we can start to do this is to start to raid. Because we're of a different religion and we're still the Asatru Norse religion, we can raise some raiders and start ravaging the land for gold and prestige and other nice goodies. So I think that's going to be our initial tactic. So we start here in 885. And then we'll also try to pick off some of these individual counties. And then hopefully the goal in this episode is to raise Erker's prestige and fame so that we can start taking bigger chunks of Britannia. We do have another independent Irish county up here, Chieftain Congalak. Now he does have a very strong ally. But this ally lies way to the south down in Iberia. So we're hoping that we can knock him out of the war before they can reach to get their forces up here if they do indeed attempt to kind of help him out. So let's uh, declare war against Chief Chieftain Congalact here. We're going to conquer the county, which is right here. We've declared war and now it's time to stop start to raise our armies and see if we can just jump right across the border here and knock him out. The war is underway and their allies from Iberia did show up. We've been chasing around the other half of their army up here, but haven't been able to catch them. I'm joining forces down here because it looks like their allies are trying to break this siege and we should outnumber them, but I don't know how good these troops are. This could be a close battle. Anyway, uh, this not going well. And in the middle of that, we got this gray days a stray arrow whiz past my head in the yard and i feel nothing no anger no fear no panic it's been part of the course i feel as if i exist behind a curtain keeling keeping me from feelings in the world and i am so tired i think i will go back to bed no i think we're ill god we're depressed melancholic a diploma all our stats go down fertility and health is a moderate penalty just gray days everything has become bleak for us now and our allies are joining forces here. This is su suddenly going a little bit sideways, but we've almost sieged the kingdom in... I don't know where his allies are going, actually. Now they're coming for us here, but the siege should end here soon. Oh, excellent. So we took the county in question, Oriel, here, and that uh, gave us 100% war score, so we can take this land and force the demands and end this war before his allies come and make problems for us. So we were lucky there, although we did uh, gain the melancholic trait here, which is not good. Disband our, all our empire, all our armies. We've got a good chunk now of Ireland to provide this buffer. If you recall in the last, last episode, um, we looked at here the uh, Jarl Heiston, who's our 71-year-old Guy who's in absolute perfect health. He's in good health. He's got a prowess of 29. This guy's just a beast. So we have to stop him from becoming king of Ireland. Although on his death, I, he's got... Oh, one of his other kids died. He's got two kids. So hopefully it'll split into half here. We'll see. But um, so far, so good. We've gra grabbed another county, raised our prestige, I think, a little bit here to get our fame up. What are we at now? Yeah, slowly but surely, it's time to go raiding. So we've gotten considerably stronger than Wessex, but I don't want to just take them one county at a time. I want to raise our prestige, but they are quite laden with gold. So I think it's time to start doing some raiding down here. With that in mind, I've set a rally point here for Hertfordshire right next to their border. 
We're gonna raise all our armies as raiders and see if we can get some loot and prestige and other goodies from our Sussex neighbors here. Let's start by going right after London. Our son, our son, Prince Bjorn, apparently is just going partying all the time. Quick update, our son, Prince Bjorn, was partying all the time on the cusp of becoming a drunkard. So we've given him an earldom to kind of hopefully teach him the responsibility and keep him away from alcohol. We'll see how this goes, but it's not looking very good, perhaps, for the future of Prince Bjorn here. In another historical note, uh, Jarl Sigurd here, the last living son of Ragnar Lothbrok, just died here in 886 at the age of 46. He flagellated himself to death. <laughs> so um, that's the end of the, all the living descent, all the, the direct descendants of Ragnar Lothbrok. Now it is up to uh, his grandchildren to carry on the mantle of taking over Britannia. Raiding brings us back 133 gold and 133 prestige as we kind of just quietly and powerfully raid the heck out of Sussex to the south of us. Finally, Sussex has raised an army to try to wipe out our raiders, but we are cutting them down despite being slightly outnumbered. It's a great victory for us. Excellent. Another year or so worth of raiding down in Sussex and fighting off the defenders brought us 156 gold and 156 more prestige. We're halfway to illustrious here as we kind of continue our efforts to raise our prestige. So, so far, so good. So with all that raiding and fighting, uh, King Eriker now is uh, over halfway to Illustrious. We do have a good bit of money. I've been able to build uh, one building in one of our uh, counties as well. But it is time, I think, to go hunting now. We've got some extra prestige to burn and some cash to burn. And I think that sometimes a good hunt can really provide a ton of prestige. So, and our armies are no longer, we, we need to let our armies replenish from raiding. So we're gonna go on a hunt now and see if that'll help out. Our hunting party has gathered and we are off. After long and arduous hunt, we have finally cornered the wolf and I will shoot it. Yes, that's how you do it. You've completed your slay beast intent, you lose 78 stress. You should get a bunch of prestige from this as well. Let's see how this goes. Most excellent, we're gonna take the head and this gives us a, a, a beastly wolf skull, which is a masterwork artifact that actually is uh, somewhat got some pretty nice things here. Pre a little bit of prestige bonus. It makes our knights motivated and it improves the grandeur of our court. So yeah, we definitely want this and we gained 375 prestige and 20 legitimacy. And we started out on the hunter track as well. So we're gonna finish this hunt. 375 prestige, that's okay for what we spent and the time we did on it. And plus this masterwork, let's put this up on the courtyard now. Let's visit our royal court here. And I think this should replace this large wall or wall ornament here, but maybe it goes someplace else. Oh, it goes up here. Beastly wolf skull. Oh, nice. That's, that's a nice attachment. Three banners and a beefly, beastly wolf skull. Although we don't have anything in this pedestal yet. I mean, eventually I'd like to, this, we want this to look a lot better. Right now it's, it's still pretty a middling royal court here. This almost slipped by, but our steward, Earl Yatvardor, who's been working on increasing cultural acceptance between the Norse culture and the Anglo-Saxon culture, has had a major breakthrough. Our cultural kind of uh, acceptance here has increased to 16%, up from 6%. We only need four more percent and we can diverge our culture. So this is a cultural windfall here because uh, it, I thought it was gonna take 20 years or more. We could be just four years away from uh, kind of forming a hybrid culture, which would be excellent for our technological gains. So once again, King Eriker here showing kind of results well beyond his aptitude. And he is gaining momentum in reaching that, uh, the desired here illustrious level. We need about a thousand more prestige to do that. And our army still is uh, rebuilding here. Yeah, it's gonna take a little while. I'd like to get over 3,000 before we go raiding again. But we might be able to take this little county over here. I don't think they have any allies. Yeah, let's do it. We're go oh, we can't. We're stuck. Why we need a Casas Belly against them. Because we're not adjacent, perhaps? Okay, well, something to work on. But speaking of weak counties, we do have one here. They have an army of 18, Earl Herabert here of 
Tiviot Dale to our north um, is left in a rather vulnerable, vulnerable position here. Let's invade that county and see if we can uh, finish them off here. God, an attempt to get that county. Our cousin actually captured it before we got there. So we're going to abandon that. I don't want to go to war with him. Uh, so be it. Yeah, disband all. I don't want to go to war with him over one county. We want to definitely save uh, our ability here when we get a little bit more prestige. In good news, by giving Prince Bjorn kind of control of Shropshire here, he has not become an alcoholic and he's actually got his act together. So we've uh, staved off a rather undesirable lifestyle for Prince Bjorn there by putting him in charge of that county. Although it was a good county, I, I didn't necessarily want to do that, but uh, still, I'd rather do that than have our uh, son become an alcoholic. The things we do for our children. Rutro, <laughs> Petty King Alfred's boils right to the south here. This could be problematic. Let's get our, she already is controlling plagues for the moment. Half brother who's 10 has boils. He's dying. Oh, he got measles. Oh, that's, that's what the boils are, I bet, right? Let's see, has he got him too? What's he got? Oh my gosh, he's got so many. He's a lunatic, he's an alcoholic. Wow, uh, Petty King Alfred here, despite being, in, it, it's got everything wrong with him. He's got great pox, he's one-legged, he's drunkard, he's insane. And wow, yeah, that's just everything's going wrong for him. He's 40 years old, he can't be in good health. His health is fine. <laughs> He gets good exercise. He's athletic and he's a decorated water leopard figurine. Oh, he's got something that gives him like health bonuses. Wow. <laughs> but he's got stomach ache too, in addition to all these other problems that he's got. But the plague has hit England. I do think we might want to marry our brother off here to see if we can get an alliance real quick before he dies. I think when he dies, though, it's probably invalidated. But let's see what we can do. Yeah, so we married our half brother off to our. Ha Oops, I th yeah, this this might be problematic here. He, I think he's related. Hopefully, they won't have children that are inbred. But all right, this is gonna be a bold move. We're gonna raise all our troops as raiders and see if we can raid these. See if we can hit these raiders up here along the coast of Scotland. They outnumber us. It's kind of a te oh, they're actually very high. Oh, it's this is Jarl Heisting. This is the Irish guy. Ooh, yeah, that might not be the best move. Let's uh, stay away from him. We'll raid down here instead. Excellent. The plague is over. King Alfred's boils have subsided. So, 17th of November, 890. We're we're close to being illustrious, and I accepted an invitation from a local hunt to try to get us over the edge. On the way, this. Uh, Eeyore Senbert kind of forced his way into our traveling camp and he's uh, challenged me to a duel, which I accepted. So we're right now in one-on-one uh, -on -one combat here and he's got a prowess of 18. I think mine is not much better. Oh, it's 18. What happened? I thought it was higher. Dual handicap rank six. I don't quite get, oh, something's off here. But anyway, this is an evenly bat matched uh, duel here. This could be problematic. Guy beat me. I had him dead to rights. We got wounded though. And then he snuck away. Single combat defeat. Gah, that's not fortunate. We're all beat up now. Oh well, at least we didn't die. Aggravated weren't. Oh, that's not good. Okay, we're going, this, this. <laughs> the way it can go sideways. Time to go hunting though. In the middle of this hunt, I am not feeling well. I'll be fine. Doesn't feel like the brightest choice, maybe, but we're king. We go on. Our hunt failed. But hopefully it will get us a little bit of prestige here. Finished hunt. Did we get 187? No, that's Jarl Guthrith, our, our that, Actually, this was Jarl Guthrith's hunt here, our um, nephew, who's the, who the kind of our best buddies now. Did we get anything? Yeah, 93 experience. That should get us to illustrious if we survive and get back. All right, we made it back home. We get a martial trait and we are illustrious. Excellent. Let's do damage now. Now we can start going after larger chunks of land. Let's start with 
petty king, Alfred the Bold. We're gonna conquer a duchy. Let's go after Huichi here, which will give us four nice counties connected to our existing realm. We're going to declare war and we are off. Go oh, no! Oh, it all was going so well. Just one became widely known. Oh no, we've died. King Erker of England in the middle of a battle against Sussex just after he reached enough fame to be able to take out county to uh, duchies. And his son, King Bjorn II, at age 31, takes over in the middle of a war. This is the second time this has happened, right? We're in the middle of the war last time. Well, on this note, we're going to end this episode. We'll continue back on with the realm once again asunder here. We're over our domain limit. We've got six out of five. I, uh, and King Bjorn is... Oh my gosh, this is such a mess again. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode. I'll post a link as soon as it's ready. Long, the king is dead. Long live the king.